Welcome to another edition of the Smart Driving Cars podcast. Thanks for joining us once again. I'm Fred Fishkin, along with the faculty chair of autonomous vehicle engineering at Princeton University, Alan Kornhauser. Hi, Alan. Hey, good evening, Fred. Good evening. And joining us, we're happy to welcome Forbes senior staff writer, Sarus Harvar. Hi, Sarus. Hey, how's it going? Terrific. Well, you have done a, a great piece this week. It's headlined, Under Fire Over Robo Taxi Safety, GM Halt's Production of Cruise Driverless Van. Of course, we're talking about the Cruise Origin, which has no steering wheel or pedals. GM had been waiting for NHTSA and waiting and waiting and waiting to for a go-ahead to start turning them out. And you've gotten a reply, I think, for, from GM uh, about some future plans. Tell us what uh, what that story is. Yeah, well, uh, there's been no shortage of cruise news uh, lately. <laughs> um, so yeah, as we speak uh, here today, it is Thursday, November 9th. Uh, I, I just want to say what day it is just so that people can put this in, in time. Um, but yeah, uh, yesterday, uh, Wednesday, November 8th, uh, I wrote a story uh, that follows the story that you just referenced, uh, which talks about kind of the turmoil uh, inside of Cruise. Um, the company held an all hands meeting on Monday, uh, which is November 6th. Um, and I was leaked a, a copy of the audio of that meeting um, in which uh, Kyle Vogt uh, talked about, the CEO of Cruise, of course, uh, talked about um, layoffs uh, at the company um, and also talked about how they're really kind of trying to figure out how to rebuild. Uh, they're going to have a new chief safety officer. Um, and they're kind of reorganizing the company under what they're calling the four pillars uh, of different sorts of, of safety and, and engineering plans. Um, and they're really trying to uh, regroup. As you said, um, they have halted uh, production of the origin. And uh, of course, their, their vehicles are, are not operating driverlessly anywhere in the country right now. Uh, they voluntarily pulled all of their cars uh, from operating in driverless mode. Uh, nationwide. So we will see what's happening. Uh, this is a company that's very much uh, in a very different place uh, compared to where it was, I think, just uh, just a few months ago. And the indications are that they, they still have vehicles on the road, but with the safety drivers on board? Yeah. I mean, my understanding is that they are allowed to uh, operate. Um, uh, they, they are allowed to operate with safety drivers and they are allowed to do testing at their facilities so on, on private land. Um, that's my understanding. Uh, so that was one of the things that Kyle Vogt talked about in the opening minutes of his of his all hands meeting was saying, reminding his colleagues what they are allowed to do um, and what they are doing uh, in an effort to presumably come back driverlessly. That being said, uh, today, Thursday, November 9th, um, the company did um, essentially fire, let go uh, an undisclosed number of contract workers um, who worked on maintenance and cleaning and other things related to the driverless uh, fleet. Um, so to me, that suggests that they don't think that that is coming back anytime soon, at least not in California. So we will see uh, how that all shakes out. It feels like there's there's something new happening all the time with these guys. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Um, are they still allowed to to offer rides for a fair in the seven by seven with a safety driver? Um, are they allowed to do that? Um, I don't think so because I don't, I don't think that they're allowed to, to do that with a safety driver. Um, I think that the, that the state authorities have revoked their, their complete license to, to operate on California roads with a, um, uh, you know, I think my understanding is that the, is that the California authorities, the CPUC, the California Public Utilities Commission, and the DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles, um, have pulled their ability to to operate uh, in the state, and then separately they have pulled, um, like I said, they voluntarily pulled their driverless fleet. Um, I have not seen reports as to whether they are continuing with a driver in Texas and Arizona, where they had been operating in addition to California. 
Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. But yeah, so, so maybe may, may in in the uh, in the all hands meeting when Kyle mm -hmm. did Kyle indicate that they were still going to operate with a safety driver in San Francisco under the PUC um, authority to be able to give rides. They can't give rides, we know, with driverless uh, because the DMV uh, has. Uh, uh, not permitted them and pulled their license to be able to do driverless mobility. But I'm just wondering if they're continuing as part of their testing program uh, to continue to give people rides and to be able to charge for it. I mean, those are really two separate questions. And I'm just wondering whether or not Kyle, uh, you know, mentioned any of that in his all hands meeting. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, he talked about, he talked about they are, um, he talked about how they're able to run driverless on a close course. Um, but I don't think my understanding is that, is that um, I don't think that they're allowed to right? You were mentioning like giving rides with a, with a driver. I don't believe that they are just because the CPUC, right. The CPUC is the entity that controls fared passenger service. That's correct. Whether, right. right. Yeah. Uh, CPUC so, uh, controls fared passenger, but the DMV, uh, controls whether or not they're able to operate. Uh, That's right. Uh, they must operate with a driver or without a That's driver right. so on my, California roads. Plus, CPUC right. also, uh, I think, constrains the operational design domain for which they had obtained permission to do it in the 7x7 to San Francisco, uh, which uh, I don't, I mean, I maybe I've forgotten. I don't didn't seem to me that the CPUC had weighed in um, as to whether or not they were withdrawing their authority to provide mobility. Right. To well, so to now, be to, to be people clear, who need a ride. Right. So to be clear, actually, something that happened today, Thursday, November 9th, uh, was that CPUC um, formally issued a stay in its August 2023 order that allowed crews to expand service uh, throughout uh, California. Um, throughout the, and, and, no, throughout the 7x7. Seven seven. It wasn't throughout California. I think they never issued an authority for them to do it throughout California, I believe. Uh, I think it was only in the seven in, in San yeah, Francisco, I think you're, the 7x7. I, seven right. seven. I think you're right, actually. Yeah, no, I yeah. think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. Um, but so they, they, I mean, effectively staying that order... Uh, and I have this order that they issued today here in front of me, but like, yeah. but effectively what that means is um, effectively that doesn't really change anything for, for crews as it stands, given that they had already, you know, that they had, um, they had suspended cruises authority to carry passengers and driverless AVs uh, as of October 24. Uh, in any case. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's, that's a, that's an important detail here because you know, prior to to what apparently they just rescinded or put on a stay today was the authority for them to go beyond the original operational design domain that they had to provide service and expand that to the seven by seven. And then there's a whole other question as to, hey, who gets to go to the airport? Which, of course, you know, Waymo's right. been out there trying to get to the airport. Uh, right. For right. what reason? Right. I, yeah, I know why, but, you know. Roll my eyes. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, um, you know, and and you know, for, as long as we're we're going down this road, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, as, as you as you probably know, um, the city and county of San Francisco have formally asked uh, CPUC to reconsider uh, its August uh, approval. Um, you know, the the uh, SFMTA, the local transit agency, the police, the fire department have also have all provided testimony uh, and have argued. Uh, formally to the CPUC that it should reconsider its approval from back in August. So that whether the rehearing will go in the in the way that the city wants it to uh, remains to be seen. But it seems that the CPUC is willing to at least hear uh, the argument as to whether they should rehear it or not. What, so do you, your... do you do you live in San Francisco or where, where are you? No, now? I live I live nearby. Uh, I live in Oakland, California. Oh, okay, so you're you're there. You see it. I mean, I'm looking at it from like three thousand miles away within a Princeton bubble. I mean, can't see anything. Even I just got cataract surgery. Actually, I can finally <laughs> see again. So wow, you know. But but anyway, so um, you know, excuse for the excuse the ignorance. Oh, you went you went on mute there, Alan. You hit a button. 
Yeah, excuse the ignorance there, but uh, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. That's why we want you on board to figure out what is actually going on there. Um, what, what's your take on the on the recall story? Um, is this strictly an over the air thing, or what? What do you know that's about the, the NHTSA thing? Yeah, they there was a NHTSA recall saying that they uh, had, they were recalling 950 vehicles. Um, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure how to understand that, like I said, given that they had pulled their fleet anyway. Um, and so, you know, it seems to me that they do have, uh, you know, that they that they're going to to reorder to give that that software update, as you as you noted, uh, to their other vehicles. I mean, I have the, the NHTSA, you know, notice here in front of me. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting about that NHTSA notice that was just issued earlier this week uh, was they, was the NHTSA notice, as, a, as you may know, talks about how, why this October 2nd uh, incident in, in San Francisco happened, right? And, and what the AV did uh, that, was, that was, you know, resulted in the woman, the pedestrian uh, who was injured and remains as of, as we speak here today, uh, in the hospital in San Francisco as a result of being well, we hit. we wish her the best. Okay? Of course, so, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely, we do. Um, who was hit by as as listeners and viewers may know was first hit by a human driver and was thrown into the path of the AV and then was hit and dragged by the AV. Um, so, uh, and I'm reading here from the NHTSA uh, recall report that was issued earlier this week. It says. Um, in the incident, a human-driven vehicle traveling adjacent to a cruise AV collided with a pedestrian, propelling the pedestrian across their vehicle and onto the ground in the immediate path of the AV. The AV biased rightward and braked aggressively, but still made contact with the pedestrian. The cruise ADS inaccurately characterized the collision as a lateral collision and commanded the AV to attempt to pull over out of traffic, pulling the individual forward rather than remaining stationary. Uh, and then it goes on to say, in certain circumstances, a collision may occur after which the collision detection system subsystem may cause the cruise AV to attempt to pull over out of traffic instead of remaining stationary when a pullover is not the desired post-collision response. This post-collision response could increase risk of injury. Uh, on October 26, cruise proactively paused operation of its driverless fleet, providing the company time to further assess and address the underlying risk. Um, so the cruise has has made it says uh, a software update that would fix this problem, and then the NHTSA notice goes on to say that that cruise has deployed the remedy to its supervised test fleet, which remains in operation, and that cruise will deploy the remedy to its driverless fleet prior to resuming driverless operations. Do you have any insight so, as to how, how they're wait, solving wait, it? To... Wait, 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 wait. I I have a question. Well, I have a bunch of questions here. Before besides, you know, I'm I'm sure that that possibly over the air updating uh could help here but but really i mean how how does how did the nitsa did not suggest how one should det determine whether or not the situation is one who my goodness it's been a, such a such a, a crash that we we should be good citizens and move our vehicle out of the way and allow and not incur even more pain to the locale by having people detained behind us or my goodness this is of a situation in which that process is going to cause some additional pain. And, and how's one supposed to determine which one of these sides of this fence are, are we in? And my feeling is one, uh, I don't think that's a software update. That's a sensor update. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how we do sensor updates over the air, but I'm not aware that, 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 that Cruz had a sensor underneath the vehicle and said, Hey, yo, there's something underneath there or in front of each one of uh, any one of our four wheels, we shouldn't move forward. I, I, where do you get this information from? Yeah. I mean, it, it, my understanding is that the, these cruise vehicles then, and maybe even still now don't have, um, cameras or sensors that are pointed at the ground. And I've also heard from, from former cru cruise uh, staffers that um, the, the sensors that are pointed at the ground, a lot of times um, 
are not always that are providing a lot of a lot of what's been described to me as as noise effectively that that you know it's not, it's often difficult to distinguish uh a pothole in the road from a i don't know a trash bag or or other things and so um in the case of a of a person um uh, you know that that certainly would be uh, one where you'd want to be much more much more cautious, of course. And do they have any any of these sensors looking underneath the vehicle? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, uh, I could be the wrong. Next, the, the next yeah. question is: Does Waymo? Again, that's a great question. Why I'm has not- NHTSA gone out there and said, "Hey, Waymo, what do you do in this situation?" What, Again, what, I think you're asking. Want, no, well, I mean, we're we're asking this. I'm asking this, not of you, of course. Yeah, I'm, no, I hear, I, you. I, I hear I, you. Nobody at NHTSA wants to talk to me, so yeah. you know, and they probably don't watch any of these things either. Uh, but you know, the question is, um, I mean, the, the issue here is, is we all know in all this stuff that the the biggest risk is we don't know what we don't know. I am yeah. not aware that anybody ever thought that, my goodness, as we start out from a stop, we need to look to make sure there isn't a body or a baby or a thing under there, under the vehicle, that we shouldn't move forward. And, of course, you know, Cruz and so does Waymo and everybody else have a control center behind there, and the control center I think has the authority to maybe say, hey, yo, stay there, or hey, yo, intervene and move out of the way. Has has, Do we know which one of those or both of them made the decision to, once stopped, move out of the way? Do we know whether it was the command center or do we know, or, or was it the AI stack, the code? That everybody, every good person writing the code said, "Oh my goodness!" In this scenario, da 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 da. Um. Mm. Yeah. My 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 understanding, and it's been difficult because Cruz, the company, uh, has not been always the most responsive to people like me, um, or at least not to me specifically. Um, no. But <laughs> where uh, do you been... think I sit in the equation? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't even have credentials. I mean, you know. Well, you can you can ask as many questions as you like. I mean, you know, you you know, you and I can can chat at each other all day. We may not get uh, get the answers, but but um, my understanding is that um, you know, I, I've I've not heard anything to suggest that that the in the October second incident in San Francisco where this woman was unfortunately dragged. Um, I don't. I have not heard anything to suggest that it was done remotely that I that so to me to me it suggests that that was just part of its kind of driverless programming but um but if Cruz would like to you know f- specifically explain uh moment by moment it, you know if that changed uh I don't I don't know well, I, see, I, I would hope from what I you would... read before from NHTSA that, that they were saying that this was the automated system that did this yeah, I mean that that's what that's what the report from NHTSA says. And and this is public and and I'm and you know you yeah, and, and anyone yeah. else can go find it. Uh and I'm happy to send it to you if necessary. But yeah, but it it yeah. um you know the the language that they use, and I'm reading here, it says, right, the A V biased rightward and braked aggressively, but still made contact with the pedestrian. To me, that yeah. suggests that suggests that the A V was operating fully autonomously, and just given the rapid nature uh, of of this you know incident, I would guess that a, a human would just be too slow. Uh, that it would be too slow to be able to act and well, react. Whether or not, whether or not a human can do that or not, I think the, the data, not to read between the lines, is that yeah. you know Mother Nature is Mother Nature. She decides to do things. You know, force equals mass times acceleration. Sometimes just doesn't do it. Okay, sure. and so. You know, the, you know, the, in other contexts, these are called the acts of God or whatever, you know, and so on. And therefore, one can't expect any system mm-hmm. to be able to violate physics. OK, I, I don't think. And it seems as if, uh, at least from the information that was put out there, all that went well. OK, it did stop. The question is, is what happened next? OK, to me. 
-hmm. the decision processes for mm -hmm. which I'm sure everybody who's worked on these algorithms from 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 Cruz to Waymo to 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 everybody else, you know, has certain scenarios that they say, oh, my goodness, we've got to, you know, this thing has to be behave properly. You know, my feeling on this thing is nobody thought of this one. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I'd like to see somebody stand up and say, hey, yeah, I was in there, you know, I'm a code writer and I suggested that we make sure that this darn thing and through our simulation, we've gone through and done that. And I would hope that Waymo has gone through its, I, I would bet Waymo has gone through its simulation stack and put this scenario in there and knows what the heck its vehicle would have done. OK, yeah, and it's command center would have done in this situation. And I'm sure they're pulling their hair out now, figuring out, my goodness, now that we know what we didn't know. Geez, at least at least we not know it. Let's make sure we can fix it so that we don't get between this rock and this hard place that we're in right now, which is my goodness. Yeah, no, you're right. I think one of the phrases that has been that I've heard from from people is the sort of long tail, quote unquote, of different scenarios. And I think the scenario of of a person being suddenly thrown into the AV's path uh, and being struck by the AV is certainly an extremely rare, thank goodness, uh, an extremely rare occur occurrence. Uh, and as I think, as you say, rightly, uh, I think is extremely difficult for people to predict. Um, and I wonder, you know, that if that's kind of gets at some of the fundamental questions that many people have about, uh, about the nature of this type of technology is that it's very difficult to anticipate the entire range of actions, particularly ones that for which there are very little, if not zero or near zero, you know, training data. Of, of, well, there is zero training data because nobody nobody has it. It's not maybe happened before and somebody nobody made it up because nobody thought of it. Right. And if anybody, you know, this is a problem with with trying to say that these systems are supposed to solve our safety problem on the roads and they're supposed to be that, you know, to me, that's that's almost the wrong approach here because because nothing is going to be perfectly safe unless, as I like to say, I stay at home and don't go anywhere, and then my house burns down, I die, and I should have gone someplace. So never mind. I mean, this is like, this is crazy stuff. Let, let's mean, steer you know, this a it, little bit, Alan, into yeah. wh where things go from here. Um, Which is, and, yes, please. Let's, we'd like your take, uh, Sarus, uh, on this too. What the situation now is that they've hit pause. California has hit pause on, on, on cruise. Where do they pick up? They're not letting go. It doesn't sound like the, the engineers, people working on on creating this technology and making it better. What they've done is cleaning staff, from what you said, for, for now anyway. Where do they pick up? What's the, What are the indications that we have of what their intentions are going forward? Well, based on the, the all hands meeting, the recording of the all hands meeting uh, that I obtained earlier this week, um, it sounds like that, so they they are gonna do additional layoffs. We don't know precisely in what division or what part of the company beyond the so-called contingent, you know, contracted workers that they that were fired today, November 9th. Uh, so there are additional cuts, job cuts that are gonna be happening. So Kyle Vogt said that during the meeting. Um, beyond that, I think that they're trying very hard to um, to have to try to regroup and to try to regain the public's trust. They know their their top lawyer, uh, uh, Jeff Blake, uh, talked about how their trust is very fragile and how it can be broken and has been broken uh, uh, very quickly. Um, so I think one of the things that they want to do is to try to listen to people from within their own company to try one idea that has been proposed uh, is to have a public facing website where they list uh, all the where where basically people can list, you know, incidents, whether, you know, something as dramatic as being struck by a car or just an incident where something unusual or unpredictable took place uh, where people can sort of report on it. Uh, and then the company would in this, you know, sort of imagined website be able to respond and say, okay, here's the car that that you interacted with. Here's why it behaved in the way that it did. Here's what we're doing to make it better. 
uh, and so on and so on. So if they actually do that, you know, that'll be interesting. Um, but that was one of the proposals that they talked about during the meeting. Is your sense that they also need to, besides having that reporting procedure, go back into the community if they're going to stay in, in San Francisco and, and, and environments there, that they need to go in and start meeting with people and ironing things out with the, the certainly. police, first responders? Yeah, et cetera, certainly. Et I mean, I mean, long prior to this, you know, pretty horrific October 2nd incident, right, long prior to that, I had reported at Forbes um, and other other media had reported as well that Cruz had had a lot of uh, friction uh, with uh, particularly, you mentioned, right, the San Francisco Fire Department. Uh, and I had mentioned also that the police and the, the transit agency, the MTA, had had uh, issues with their cars as well. I mean, the San Francisco Fire Department specifically um, has documented dozens of incidents where both crews and Waymo cars have disrupted their operations. So this ranges from blocking a firehouse to running over a fire hose to entering uh, an emergency scene. Uh, I reported on an incident uh, that happened in San Francisco where at the scene of a of a, a car accident, it actually turned out later to be a city bus that struck a person um, where a cruise car, which was not involved in the actual accident, but was present in the in the scene, like as emergency responders were, were there, um, the fire department said that the cruise car blocked uh, its own ambulance from leaving the scene, delaying uh, the ambulance, <clears throat> taking this patient to the hospital, delaying them by approximately two minutes. Um, the patient ended up dying at the hospital about 30 minutes later. Um, they clarified that they're not blaming Cruz on the person's death. But in the report, they do talk about how any delay of getting people out of an emergency scene and to you know, adequate medical care is you know intolerable uh, for them. So um, all of that is to say that, that this October 2nd incident is not the first documented kind of, I would say, you know, uh, level of friction or incident of friction between public agencies and crews. That, that said, uh, and of course, uh, the, the critics and, and the, the incidents have generated a, a lot of publicity. There have been supporters that occasionally there are, there are stories about people, maybe with disabilities, groups that were counting on this transportation and they Certainly. they want they want it to grow Certainly and you know it's it's worth noting that at the the you know we talked about that August CPUC meeting uh, which was held in San Francisco uh, that allowed Cruz to expand its service uh, within San Francisco um, at that meeting there were people as you say who talked about how helpful this service was for them and how much they enjoyed using it and how they wanted to use it more um, and, you know, Cruz and Waymo both have have uh, published videos from people with disabilities, people who are blind, people who have uh, certain, you know, needs and situations and circumstances uh, for which an autonomous car like this would be very useful to get them to where they need to go. How about videos of people that are poor? No, never mind. I, I well, haven't seen uh, one. Never mind. Well, the, no, the, I mean, the, this is the, the look, thrust being look, people who need rides are the ones who would really be uh, be a benefit. Be benefiting the most. Maybe, from, from yeah, this yeah. Um, you know, when 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 Cruz first came to San Francisco, every there were some reports out there saying, "Oh my goodness, they're only doing this at night when it's easier," and I wrote. Oh my goodness, they're doing a night when Mooney is at sleep. Mooney doesn't run buses. The San Francisco transit system isn't there. They, I think they run two buses, excuse me, at night. Okay. If somebody needs a ride, okay, I guess they walk. All right. And to me, it, they should have been praised. People in San Francisco should have said, finally. Maybe it's to take the drunks home. I don't know. And keep them from driving their cars and who knows what. But that, that wasn't the story that seemed to come out of San Francisco. And, and the stories that have come out of San Francisco have seemed to me to be, except for, for maybe the, 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 the blind community, um, um, all sort of, oh, my goodness, these things are intruding in us. I guess everybody in San Francisco has a couple Lambos to drive around whenever they want. 
And in fact, you know, I, you know, it seems to me that San Francisco, a great place to test technology, terrible place to test the market. They should leave. They should say, fine, put up with Mooney. Oh, what a great service. If you happen to be going on, on, a, on a cable car route or you're, or you're a tourist. I don't know what people, how people get around that don't have a car in San Francisco. And, you know, sure, I'll wait for a bus. Whatever. And it's a shame. It's a darn shame. San Francisco had the opportunity to have a, a, a high quality, demand responsive mobility system come serve people who need rides every day, maybe to go to work, maybe to go to cello lessons so that they can get into Princeton. Who knows? But that it just never seemed from 3,000 miles away, looking across the country through the whatever. And, and the blindness of that never seemed like San Francisco appreciated that. Oh, you ran over a fire hose. How many cars have run over fire hoses? I think the fire okay. department would tell you not very many. Well, no, I don't think I don't think they've kept track. Well, but that's exactly the point. I mean, when okay. I, having spoken to firefighters, they would say in the incident, <laughs> in the incident regarding the uh, where they they say that they they delayed the ambulance from leaving. Yes. I asked them that exact question. I said, yes. "Well, how many times does this happen where a person would be there?" And they said, "A per, a, a human driver would not stay in the scene where we're responding for ten minutes, uh, and we would we would bark at them, we would issue orders, we would yell at them, and they would leave." I don't know. I, you know, whatever. Well, obviously, you know, a lot I, I mean, we we, do, we don't want to debate it. It turns out, my view from afar, is these these two companies came into San Francisco, and I don't think addressed the market properly, and they were seen as intruders. They were seen as you know some fancy. I mean, you know, people even you know recreated videos showing. Showing somebody smashing wheels, they put cones in front of them. They thought they were being invaded, and it's a shame. It's a shame that these both of these companies did that. Okay, sure, they proved they could go down the curviest road in in, in the world. Great, they did the proof of technology. It really works. This crash, I mean, geez, I mean, it's a jaywalker and it's somebody hit, hit and run. Have they caught that person? Not as far as I know. Was well, so, that possible? Doesn't the video and the, and and all this stuff from the cruise vehicle pick up the pick up the license plate in that vehicle? Sure, but if that license, if that car was stolen, uh, that's not going to help them did, find the person they, who was did driving. Did they find the stolen car? I don't know. Did they I have not... Has anybody point, even chased point, that down? I my mean, point is that it's amazing. It's amazing. Well, but my point is, is that if the right, put yourself in the shoes of a San Francisco police detective. If the car is stolen, and maybe the person had a mask on, maybe like there could be all kinds of scenarios that could explain why they haven't caught that person. So, you know. Well, let let back I on. Mean, I, back I don't on, know. Back on I the mean, issue I'm sure. of where I mean, things go know, from the, here. The, the, it, it's yeah. it's uh, you know. It, it, it this is such a weird situation, such a a low probability event, such a my goodness, Kyle must be there. What the heck did I do to deserve this? Okay, but the question still is: from here, where does it what go? Do do? How do they, in in their own words, regain the public trust? Um, and I, mean, I think because you're talking to San Francisco, but obviously this is at least throughout California and probably the rest of the country and maybe a good part of the world. Okay. That, that reads the story and says, Hmm, do we want this? So how, how do we regroup and redeploy and, and have this desired by the public as something valuable? Well, I, I mean, to me, it, it seems to right. You have to make sure that people trust the technology, that they want the technology there in the first place, that they're going to use it. Uh, right. As, as you know, right. Waymo continues to operate in San Francisco, uh, continues to operate in Phoenix as we speak. Um, so, uh, 
Um, and as far as I know, uh, Waymo has not had uh, anywhere close to the degree of incidents uh, of this type that Cruz has had. Um, Waymo, while it has had some incident, inc incidents, uh, for example, that were documented by the San Francisco Fire Department, of the dozens of records that I obtained from the fire department, approximately two thirds of those were Waymo cars. Um, so two out of three incidents were were cruise cars in, in that in that uh, situation. Yeah, I, I think that's that's all true. And 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 kudos to Waymo. They've done a fantastic job on the safety stuff, and they've been in it for so long, and they've done it met meticulously and 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 extremely well. And I suspect that a you know an hour or so after they heard about this incident, they went through all their simulations and said, "What the hell would have we done?" And I'm certain on the software side they fixed that. And if all the other folks in in this business haven't also done that, then they shouldn't be in this business, because of course once one of these once we learn something that we didn't know going forward we have to make sure that that never happens again because we can because now oh my goodness it's <laughs> didn't realize i mean sorry it, you know not that anybody would accept the apology but we you know we we're thinking about all this other stuff we we didn't at least i haven't heard that anybody thought of this one okay otherwise they would have put a camera underneath and they would be sensing to see, is there anything underneath? And you don't really necessarily need to do that as you're going who knows how many miles an hour down the down the 101 or something like that. It's when you start up. So everybody sort of knows. And that's why in some sense, it's interesting that the, that the NHTSA, you know, uh, recall on this thing doesn't say, hey, how are you gonna, how are you gonna know whether or not there is somebody under there or not under there. Okay, tell us. Maybe maybe you have some super duper sensor lidar, bidar, schmidar, who knows what are that does that. I don't know. I haven't seen it written. I haven't heard about it. But maybe again, you know, <laughs> apologies for being so stupid. Uh, but but you know, and and this this is not doable. And to me, that you know, the the biggest thing that that really this this points out, which is some other things that we've been trying to point out here is that these companies, if they're going to be able, if they're really going to be safe, which is important, as you pointed out, for, for public trust, they should be cooperating on safety. They really should be. I know it's collusion. I know there's the antitrust laws. The, the federal government should change the antitrust laws and say, my goodness, this isn't IP. This isn't what we compete on. This isn't what we're going to make money on. This is a necessary condition for us to even be able to, to be in business. And we should cooperate on this. And it's a good thing all this stuff has been written about this because at least everybody must be at least paying attention to this thing. That, I don't know. If you run into somebody who said, oh, yeah, you know, we knew that. We knew that. If you knew that, why didn't you tell everybody else that this was a situation that, could, that 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 we should be careful about? Why did you keep it to yourself? Were you competing? Hey, I know, I know something you don't know. I mean, really, this is the way this industry is supposed to operate. I mean, forget the driverless part, right? Isn't that how car companies and other transit companies operate currently? I mean, we don't have I airlines. Do do airlines? I mean, I don't know. I, airlines I genuinely... absolutely they cooperate. They? Okay, absolutely, absolutely. Boeing cooperates with the uh, with the uh, European whatever the company Airbus. is. Airbus, of course they do. How did we get to a point in which there are no crashes? Of course they do. Okay, because look at what's happening with this. Cruise crashing, everybody gets hurt. Uber kills Elaine Herzberg loses 60 billion in, 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 in capitalization. Okay. This this could mean the end. This could mean the end of cruise. This it, which it came it out very well could. It very well could. Very well could. And so, you know, in some sense, and if anybody else so these situations, if somebody knew about this and kept it to themselves, oh my goodness. I would hope the marketplace says, what the heck were you guys doing? That That's something you've advocated for a long time. That's, well, I mean, you, know, you don't, you don't is, compete you know, on safety. Right? This, this is the safety pieces. 
it's the paramount thing that Washington, that's the only, you know, maybe the only reason why we have a, a federal department of transportation is to deal with safety. Why does NHTSA exist? Safety. These, these folks need to be, these, they all need to be forthright on safety. Absolutely make all the information available and share it among themselves so that they say, look, because, hey, if you go screw up, it's going to affect me. And it's going to affect the public good that, that these vehicles, they're supposed to give rides. They're supposed to be affecting the public good. They're supposed to do it efficiently. They're supposed to help save the environment. I don't know. <laughs> Throwing it out there to you. We're going to move on I, to a couple of other quick headlines uh, from the yeah, news that are related whatever. here. Waymo is, has put the word out that they're taking a limited fleet of cars to Buffalo to test Waymo driver where the winter can get pretty, in quotes here, challenging to say the least. Not really. There are only 28 days a year uh, in which it snows one inch or more in in in, um, in Buffalo. And these vehicles, all this technology has not been designed to solve the, the fog problem or to solve this, the, the snow problem. Here in Jersey, when it snows, the governor says everybody stay home until we get a chance to shovel. Okay? And why why shouldn't these systems operate? And why do they have to operate 365.25, 24-7? How about 24-7, 350? Or in Buffalo, 24-7, 325? Steve still would be, like, thrilled. <laughs> I don't know, King, whatever. King, King, King Charles is weighing in here too, Alan. You got this yeah. in the newsletter. Yeah. Reuters reporting Britain says uh, makers, not car owners, liable for self driving crashes. Um, and I think you would say that people yeah. don't have any business owning a auto truly autonomous well, vehicle. No, I mean, if it's giving me a ride or you a ride or any of us a ride, then the person that's giving you a ride is responsible. If I get in United Airlines and the plane crashes, you know, United Airlines is, you know, I guess responsible, or at least is the, the front of this thing. So anybody, and I don't think Cruz or Waymo ever suggested in San Francisco that, you know, if something happens to a, to a rider inside their vehicle, it's the same thing as if they were on, you know, on a, on a cable car. Something happens to a rider on the vehicle, the cable car company is, I guess, responsible. Right? And that's, I don't know. So, of course, but then the question is, is what's a self-driving car? Okay? And, you know, if, is, is a Tesla a self-driving car today? Tesla would say, hell no. No, you know, they might call it self-driving. <laughs> is it if it's called self-driving does that make it self-driving and then you're responsible even though in the fine print it says hey no it's not self-driving uh you got to pay attention you know it's on your buck i don't know where, where where do you stand on this i mean in the case of tesla i know that there are lawsuits that are trying to uh, resolve that exact question um and as you know uh people have died um in instances where they it seems like they believe that the that they could use the so-called full self-driving mode uh, in their Tesla. Um, that being said, uh, I think that there to me there's a difference between owning a car that you know claims to have a quote unquote full self-driving mode and and operating it yourself. Uh, there's a difference between that and my getting in as a passenger into a company car uh, that is you know autonomous. Um, Absolutely. And so, you know, but I think I think that part of the I think to me, just if we take a step back, I think that there's a question about who is responsible, not just term, in terms of like legal liability, but just in terms of like, right, if, if I'm driving my car down the street and I hit, you know, my neighbor's trash can or I hit my neighbor's lamppost or lamppost mailbox or something, you know, like that's on me, a person. We have a mechanism for resolving that we have, you know, you can take revoke points on my driving record. You can find me, you can revoke my license. There's all number of measures right. uh, that, that scale up as the severity of the, of the accident uh, goes up. 
uh, in the case of one of these companies, uh, one of the one of the questions I have is is what is that sort of scaling up of penalties for a large, uh, extremely large company like um, General Motors that owns Cruz, of course, or Waymo, which is owned by by Google or or its Alphabet, uh, Alphabet uh, the the parent company, right? These are like mega corporations uh, that we don't, as far as I know, have like a real meaningful way of, you know. Um, penalizing them should uh, another incident like this repeat itself. Um, so I think that's a that's a question of you know. Although they do have very deep pockets for which you know. Well, that's exactly uh, my point. It, that's and, and it should that should continue. I mean, you know, that will make them behave because you will know how many, I mean, those, how many of those are they going to be able to to um well to but, circumvent or, or afford i mean how big does their war chests have to be to be able to handle those well but that's exactly my point is that i think <laughs> that right currently our laws as i understand them do not anticipate right like my <laughs> you know my personal uh net wealth is a lot smaller than google's <laughs> so really my, yeah. I, I was i was gonna yeah, nuzzle up to you it's hard to believe. Can, I know. Yeah, give I mean, me a loan. I yeah, it's hard to believe. <laughs> but like, but you know, like, it, right? If the government finds me like a few thousand dollars and takes my license for a year, like that's pretty damaging. That hurts me, right? Like, um, and you're gonna need a ride. You're gonna <laughs> need one of these systems. To well, take I ride. Right? I ride my bike a lot. I ride my bike a lot. Well, okay. yeah. No, no, I no. That's great too. But. You know. Yeah. yeah. So no. Anyway. Yeah, and and of course, I think if somebody's giving you a ride, they're responsible, and they're the ones that are, will have to have whatever the war chest, deep pockets, whatever, and so on to be able to make you whole. Of course, I don't think there's any, and I, you know, but I, but the key thing is, is are you being given a ride, or are you giving yourself a ride, and you just happen to be, uh, want to ease up and take advantage of this thing, and. You know, my argument has always been that most of the crashes and so on are due to due to human misbehavior, and I prefer they're not crashes, they're not they're not accidents. Certainly, they're misbehaviors. You know, we drink, we we tailgate, we speed, we go through red lights, we go through stop signs. I mean, the misbehavior is just. <clears throat> A few, a few it's, people text now and then too. I mean. And the texting, oh my god! I mean, <laughs> look, I mean, it's like, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. What are you gonna do? I mean, it's it's one, just one more, one more quick headline. Yeah, um, Geely's Zeker has made uh, has filed paperwork, uh, I think, publicly now for for the U.S. IPO. Uh, one source had said the underwriters are are led by Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. There's also a report that Zeker revealed wider losses today for the first half of the year. Why should they be any different, I guess, right? But um, And Zeker, of course, has ambitions to team up with Waymo. Yeah, and and I don't know. Have you seen anything with respect to Waymo wanting to te really team up with them? I haven't. I haven't seen the announcement, or I didn't see it. Maybe I don't look close enough on their web page, but it seems like... I don't know. It's um, it's a um, oh yeah. I I'm doing an IPO and I want to team up with Forbes. Okay, actually Forbes doesn't live very far from here or whatever. But uh, you know who you know for who what you know. I, I mean, are, are investors that unsophisticated? Sorry. <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, I mean I, I think it's worth I think it's worth noting. I was sort of surprised just when I did the back of the envelope math that you know, bringing it back to Cruz for a moment, uh, you know, that Cruz has spent something on the order of six billion dollars over the last five years on Cruz alone, uh, to say nothing of how much has been spent overall on this industry over the last decade, which. 30, According to 30, 300 billion is my the number I like. Yeah, I think it's in the hundred. Yeah, yeah. I think it's in the hundreds of billions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. You You're know, right. McKinsey and whatever a bunch yeah. of people have looked at yeah. it. You know, they're yeah. that. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, go just on. that. Please. I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's amazing to me that um, that so much money has been spent on this project broadly around the industry uh, over the last several years. Um, 
you know, it's it's um, I remember going to a hearing in Sacramento where the where the CPUC or I think yeah, I think it was CPUC was in the very early stages of kind of considering, you know, how these cars would interact with human drivers in California. And this was before like any, you know, long before any commercial service even existed. Um, and so, yeah, it's uh, you know, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how how crews will adapt to uh, to this situation. Well, well, I always like to blame Adam Jonas of Morgan Stanley, and I love Adam and whatever. <laughs> but uh, but I mean, he's sort of, he, he's he's the guy who sort of made it somewhat clear to me. You know, in the U.S., on a typical day, there are 1.1 billion person trips. And person trips that are greater than walking and of of which maybe, I don't know, 1% or something like that really could be taken by bikes or whatever. And so that's, to me, that's a total addressable market for these things, 1.1 billion a day. Now, the question is, is how do we do these things? Most of them we do with ourselves in which we do I'd call them Home Depot style, you know, do it yourself. Got myself a car. Uh, but that's only about half of them. The other half, people bum a ride. And um, my wife doesn't like me to use the word bum a ride, but that's really what they do. They either get a ride from a parent, from a son, from a who knows what to do. They get a ride here, they get chauffeured there, da 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 da. They, and, you know, half a billion trips a day that, you know, bum a ride that's a pretty darn good market you make, make a buck on one make a couple bucks on 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 one you know it it, it is it is a big business that could be very profitable and be very affordable and provide when you look at it oh my goodness if you did it right with ride sharing da, 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 you know save the planet help save the planet it could, I mean, but that, I feel like I feel like for the last decade, this technology has been three years away from being mainstream. Um, yeah, well, well, look, we have plasma physics laboratory right down the road. You know, Tokomax, we're supposed to be free energy. They're always what fifty years away. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, that, that's why. That's why I guess I'm a techno jerk or whatever, or a space cadet or whatever you want to call <laughs> me. But uh, yeah. Uh, it, it is, it, 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 it's hard, but it's really not that hard. And we just have to be, we have to be careful of what we don't know, of course. And as soon as we know it, we be, first we're not there to fix it. Because once we know it, I think we can fix it. Look, we fixed so many other things already. And that's why you have to be open. That's why you have, you, you I mean, if, if, Kyle should say, you want data? Come in, tell us what you want to see. Why should we hide this? There's no reason to hide it. I think that's a, it I think that's a great the safety piece. Yeah. Again, and, I think and, and, and they should have point. antitrust immunity in terms of sharing this. And they should all do that. I'm not, I'm, I don't know enough about antitrust to know, to, to <laughs> have neither, really an opinion me, about me that, neither, but, me neither, but me I will <laughs> say, I will say in terms of, of trust, I mean, you know, uh, I asked to see the video uh, from the October 2nd incident. Yeah. They wouldn't show it to me. They did show it to some other journalists. Um, they, the California DMV uh, says that they were not shown the full video of that October 2nd incident. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they said that only once they contacted NHTSA did they realize that they had not been shown the full uh, video. Uh, meanwhile, Cruz claims that they did show uh, the full video to um, to DMV. So, you know, you talk about trust. I think, I think right now, at least, you know, California state regulators, particularly DMV, and they've said as much in their in their public statements, right? Have said like we don't think these vehicles are safe. Um, and yeah, so, yeah, no. You know. I mean, they they listed four things. I mean, those things were, whoosh, oh my goodness, and 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 rightfully so. And I, it's it's hard for me to to think that that the decision to not just you know open up the kimono and show everything came from Kyle. I just don't, I, I don't know. I don't know him that well, <laughs> although I have competed with him and I know him a little well. I, I just don't think, I mean, it's, 
Look, we all know that the, the worst thing, uh, the cover up is worse than the crime. And we should have all learned that. Watergate taught us that, if nothing else. Okay. And, and the way these systems, the, the safety piece is so critical. It's not really to me the objective. It is it is it is what you need to to have to be in the game. You don't you don't even make the team, let alone sit on the bench, let alone get in and play, unless you can do that. And that's true for everybody. And if one of the if one of them is <clears throat> Then it's it's it, it, and so you have to be and you can't have you can't have uh, entities out there that are that are, you know, smoke and mirrors and snake oil salesmen. And, and thank goodness, a bunch of them have, have failed. And, and the, the marketplace has, has, you know, they decide to exit. I mean, the stuff that's out there, you know, you roll your eyes. Really? You can do that? I don't think so. Who are you kidding? Where are the smoke and mirrors on this thing? I mean, you know. Uh, and so I think this is, in some sense, I think it's good for the industry. I think it's good for them. It, it needs to come together. And I think at the end, provide great mobility for a whole lot of people who then can maybe get to a grocery store or get to whatever or go visit somebody who's been incarcerated in some prison someplace and go visit them or whatever goofy reasons that anybody wants to go from A to B and then get back home. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> this, is, this isn't easy, okay, as we're seeing, right? Absolutely. Anyway. So, Bruce, we want to thank you for spending time with us, and we look forward to continuing continuing to follow the great work that you do at Forbes. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, and, and thank you for the insight on there. And, and, um, and yeah, and please keep beating on these companies to, to behave and look, and just give rise to people. Okay. You can find us at smartdrivingcar.com, also on Spotify, TuneIn, Apple, Google, Amazon, wherever you turn to for podcasts. My tech reports are at textination.com. I'm Fred Fishkin, along with Alan Kornhauser. Thanks for listening or watching. Please continue to stay safe. Thank you very much.